Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm back with a dry front deck profile. Now, I won vocals this week with dry drum. I also won last week with dry drum. That was a very, very bad build. So, last week, I played the Megalith package on locals, um, which is arguably probably just the, the, the best build, but. The, the what kind of sucked was I kept opening Ophio and Bathor, and it reached a point where I was looking at my deck and I played like the Bathor, the Ophio, I played uh, the DPE in the site, and I was like, bro, I, I can't, I don't want to brick anymore. It's 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 done. I I do not want to brick anymore. Please, for the love of God, don't let me brick anymore. So I was looking to other Drytron strategy out there, and what I really noticed was Shinping's Drytron deck list, which was a very cool list that focuses around um, Aurorodon and setting back Ghost and matches chance with Beatrice, which was looking very, very cool. Also, it never combos because your opponent always has a hand trap. So I was looking at that deck and I thought it was very cool, but after playtesting it for a while, I just really noticed this wasn't for me slash my area. But a uh, big shout out to Shumping, go check him out. His lists are always fire. He was the one that had the feature match at the YCS. Did some very cool stuff with the deck. So I was working on that list. Um, and I basically said to myself, uh, what if we just do not have a win condition? And that's the dry throne list that I won with yesterday. So this is a dry throne list that um, I changed it a lot after yesterday. Um, so this is not technically the local winning deck profile. So I added them in a, a couple of cards that are very impactful, but I'm gonna explain everything as I go. Uh, but it's it's like a literal four card difference than what I was playing yesterday to kind of get a more better end board on the field uh, because I was having some trouble with my turn one place. But this deck, first of all, to explain why it's so good, you can play all the power cards. You play Droplets, you play Talents. There is so much good stuff in this deck. Going second, you will easily destroy your opponent. You can just Droplet make Zeus or um, just play through your opponent's stuff with the Drytrons itself. That that was the entire idea of the deck, why I still wanted to play it. It was really good. But the thing it was lacking yesterday was kind of a win con when going first. So I put in um, some cards you all might hate slash cancel me for. But that's completely fine because you know it is still Drytron. We need a win con. So this is brickless Drytron while still playing a couple of bricks. But the deck works and it's really good. Trust me, source trust. This is not the this is not the best intro for a deck that I have ever given. But it's gonna be good enough. Let's go into the deck profile. I mean, you cannot really be less honest about. Something, you know, I, I can't tell you guys this is the best deck of the format. It's not the best deck of the format. Everybody runs a million hand traps. But you can make the list so that it runs a lot better against those decks. This is a list that, in my opinion, can easily top a YCS. Um, of course, I can just say that without any proof. Um, so 1v1 me in the comments. But I do genuinely think that this deck is still very viable. And it's very cool to see cool, uh, great players like Shunping still play it. I just think that there's a lot of directions you need to go... Uh, in a slightly different direction. Before we go into the deck profile, I want to thank my sponsor, Smart TCG, for sending me this very nice Zeus place field center. And uh, you might be wondering, okay, cool, it's a nice metal field center, but on the back, it has an NFC chip. Now this is what you um, use your phone for to scan, to pay uh, without you know having your own card, to, to pay with your phone. You can write any code you want on this, and like a website or uh, an image or a YouTube video, and you're Opponents can scan this uh, nice field center and they will link immediately to you. So it's very nice for you content creators if you want to link your YouTube channel. Or it's very nice if you want to link your card market, for example, or your TCG market. Very, very solid. And first of all, it is beautiful and it is very nice. Uh, this one actually links to um, Rick Ashley. Never going to give you up. So that's also something you can do just to put some inspiration in. And also, of course, big shout out to Dragon Shield, which is just the best the best look at how beautiful these sleeves are they're so nice i love Dragon shield link to everything is in the description down below all right so the ground review um first of all the spicy tech is machine angel ascension the new speed dual uh, skill it's really good i play this now when in testing this was proven to be super copium because it is only good if you have pre-prep and even then you only have two negates, but two negates is often very much enough, which is very nice. And it just gives for a lot of advantage. 
So I do play the pre-prep package with the Herald of the Perfection. Now you don't end on uh, four negates, sometimes three at max, but two negates is always just fine. If you have pre if you have pre-prep, it's very nice to have this. If you don't have pre-prep, you just don't work towards this, and it's also kind of nice. So I wanted to play Mithionis Dracon. It's the reason why I wanted to cut him, because it's kind of like a brick. But what is kind of nice about him is he's a machine. And you can tribute him for Meteonis. And a lot of opponents don't expect it. Like you have a board, you activate Meteonis, the Tripitual Summon. Then they activate uh, DPE, pop your monster, or they activate Battle Butler, pop your monster. And it's always a nice surprise to have this in your hand, even when you search it. Because they're like, oh, you're still Ritual Summoning. I'm like, yeah, still Ritual Summoning. So I wanted to play him, and it's just it's such a strong monster. I play the Cyber Angel package, I play Idaten, Benten, and I also play Natasha. The reason why I also play Natasha, uh, even though I wanted to play less bricks, is I play triple pre-prep, and it often came up where I just didn't have preparation, or, or didn't have any targets for preparation. And this was just really nice to have. Uh, sick card, very happy that I finally put it in, after a couple of years without. Play triple diviner, play orange light. Um... Yeah, this is just a one-off. You don't really want to open this at all. It's not a brick if you open it. <laughs> it's the general team of this deck profile has been set. This deck is good. Trust me, okay? Uh, this is really good. You can just search it in your combo. If you have any of your pieces already, you can just search this early with Ben 10 and play around the nip because the deck does really die to nip. And yeah, you can just search it later to have this card fodder for Herald of Perfection, which is just really nice. I like the Herald of Orange Light. Came up a lot of times where I searched this, got like Dark Ruler or Droplet, but still had a negate and our opponent couldn't play through it. Then, uh, some of the inspiration from Champing, not all of the inspiration. Now, his deck is really focused on being very consistent with Triple prepara or triple Pot of Prosperity. Now, you all know that I really hate Pot of Prosperity, so I'm not playing that. But I did want to look at his ratios and try a little bit of something out, you know. So I play triple alpha, triple zeta, only two gamma, and then the two delta, because I don't play prosperity, the delta becomes a lot better. Uh, and you're going to see in the spell ratios that it's going to be very different as well from what you are used to. Very different, a little bit different. And then I play two other monsters. So what happened a lot was I ended on like two random monsters. I ended on like a, a perfection and I ended on like a Draconis or an IP. And then I had just two random monsters on the field with, without any real use, like a Linkaribo or a Diviner. And I realized that I uh, could use those two monsters to make Shorte. So unfortunately, we are not playing Dash or a Celestial because I wanted to have another negate. So, yeah. I don't have an excuse. Uh, these are bricks. These weren't in the deck yesterday, but every time that I went first, it kind of felt like I wasn't really going anywhere. And just put playing Verte really gives your deck a direction to go in. So I did want to put in these two bricks. Uh, next to that, all the other cards are kind of like just very fine to open, so that doesn't really matter at all. But I did really, really have to play these two bricks. You can also play uh, Fusion Destiny if you really like to. I like the Dragoon for the extra negate, so you can end on a little bit more uh, something cool. And then we play this Red Eyes Fusion, of course, which is the first of the spells. And now I'm going to shove away these to show all the spells. So I play Triple Nova, Double Emergency. The kind of I have a kind of idea about Yu-Gi-Oh right now and why a lot of people play 60 cards. So there's a lot of good cards in Yu-Gi-Oh right now. Uh, for example, if you look at the Sword Soul deck, Vessel is really good. You read uh, Circle Spheres is really good. Moye is really good. But if you open double Moye, double Vessel, double Spheres, it really sucks. So one of the reasons why a lot of people go to 60 is say so that they draw their bricks less and they draw. Uh, cards that are hard once per turn, less twice. So Nova is obviously just fucking insane, being both a body and summoning any dragon in the deck. Uh, this is nice because it adds any dragon in the deck, but it is just once per turn. So I wanted to make a little room somewhere, so I cut the Gamma because it's like the worst and the best right draw at the same time. Um, and then I also cut one of the Cyber Emergencies down. This is what Shumping did in his list already, and I kind of like the idea, so I wanted to try it too, and so far I haven't really been, you know, uh, wasn't very bad or something. I still play the one Fafnir. You can cut this. We are already above 40. Uh, I like to play above 40 because we played it in the room package. Um, you don't have to play Fafnir, but I kind of like it. If you open both, it's fine. You can just add the Ritual spell. 
Then we play triple prep, of course, for the Herald. Play uh, triple the other prep. You play one Dawn of the Herald for the Ritual Package. Then for the Staples, you play triple, triple Tactic Talisman. Now this card is insane. I don't understand why not a lot more people are playing this. Uh, triple Forbidden Droplets. Then we play one Meteonus Tritron, one Fully Burial, one Caught by the Grave. I think this is 45, could be 46, not really sure. Because I added some cards last minute. Um, deck's just really straightforward in what it does right now. You just try to, you know, open pre-prep. If you don't, that's fine. You just start Ritual Summoning, start making advantage with the Benton. End on like an IP and a Dragoon. Um, just go full in. It's, it's, it's super nice. So for the extra deck, I used to play the Chaos Fog as well, which is just an option. But we are very tight on extra deck space. Because what you can do with this is you can make Baron the Fleur with uh, the Viner. Which is very, very nice. Uh, but I did want to make room for the Dragoon because I felt like it was a little bit more oppressive. Um... I kind of want to play both, but th there's a couple of things that we have to talk about. So Link Rebel, of course, stays in. Um, this is a card you can swap out for Baron if you have it, if you don't think that Dark is good. I like Dark in this deck, because you could just make Link Rebel with any dry Tron, make Dark steal their DPE. Which did happen a lot of times yesterday. So, Suffer really told me that I have to play Dark. I'm not really sure, so I'm going to try this out, see if I miss a Baron, and maybe the, just the Baron comes back. Because this is not really a brick uh, in the first place. So, yeah. Play IP, because you end on uh, IP Verte, which makes Appaloosa. Uh, Verte, I play Phoenix, I play Unicorn. I was really adamant on playing both of these still. Just the cold ink effects are just very nice. Appaloosa is here. I want to test this out again. I feel like this is pretty good. This meta's really bad against the Brave, of course, but it's really good against like all the other decks that you can play against right now. Because just a Brave Engine, you can just like make uh, Phoenix pop the Fate or something. And it just make Appaloosa, and they cannot really out the Appaloosa, and you can just negate two prank kits or something, which is just really nice. So in theory, I think this is very good, uh, but I do have to look and see, because this can be very match of dependent. It's not really good against Brave, so yeah, we're gonna have to wait and see for that. I play the Herald, I play in this, I play the Goon, for the extra deck, Zeus, Beatrice, Downard. Uh, still double a bit, Fafnir. We were also talking about the Downard, but it came up so many times where I went second, I just did like dropped it for two. Uh, like negate two monsters, make this attack, make this, make Zeus, send one, stay chain Imperm or Vader, chain another time. I don't know, I still like this card. You can also cut this if you are very confident that you do not need, um, yeah, yeah, that you do not need all these cards. So, definitely, what something that I still want to consider is the for is the what's it called? The Baron the Fleur, because I just really liked it. It was a really surprise factor, because often you summon Valk, and they just have no clue what you're doing, and then you make Baron, and then it's already too late. So as for my side deck, play Duster, play One Collector, because you play Beatrice, play Zombie World Banshee, this is just, this is sick. This is sick. This is so good. I automatically won against Flow Under, because I opened this. It was so nice. One reboot, one Lancia, because you can theoretically search it. Not really sure if it's the best, so a lot of one-offs. Triple Twin, I didn't want to play Triple Ruler because you could just make Zeus afterwards. And for this event, I wanted to test Mystic Mine out. Now, Mystic Mine also very bad against Brave, but you're not struggling that much against Brave anyway. And it's kind of a win con against certain other decks, or at least you can stall like very, very long with Mystic Mine. Which is why I wanted to test it. It was, it was okay. I decided it in a bunch yesterday, but I didn't play against uh, that many Brave decks at all anyway. No changes in this in the side, in the side deck for now. So, realistically, um, this deck profile has been kind of a fucking meme at this point. But I do genuinely believe that this deck is really good. I really like the direction it is going in. I am kind of missing full, but it's so difficult to justify four places in your main deck. Uh, that consists of two cards that you do not want to draw. Man, that's just really harsh. Maybe eventually I'll go back to that. So far, I've been liking the pre-prep package, but it only came up that I had this and this in my hand once. So maybe I'm just biased and haven't bricked enough. But I think that like playing the Dragoon really also, you know, it helps you because if you open two of these, you could just discard this for the Dragoon and it helps a lot for the IP, for the Phoenixes, etc. So, so far, this is the deck list that I have been working on. A lot of progress in a very small amount of time. Um... Yeah, big shout out to Champagne for the inspiration. Huge shout out to Suffer by Jill for helping me out. Links always in the description down below. Uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. This has been the uh, 
27th Retron deck profile this year. See you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.